Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. It's the spring equinox on Wednesday, but I don't think the weather is paying a great deal of attention because there is quite a distinctly wintry flavor to the outlook. So without further ado, I'm going to start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 19th. And at the outset, it's a relatively quiet picture. There are some outbreaks of rain in the south, it patchy. But as I run this, what we see is some heavier bursts move eastwards across central areas. Then a ridge of high pressure builds for a brief time, but through Friday and into weekend, a significant change takes place. High pressure becomes centered further west in the Atlantic and colder air moves down from the northwest. And as I run this through to its conclusion, what we see is those colder conditions become established across all parts of the UK. And then high pressure, at least according to this computer model run, starts building to the north. And we end up with rather cold pattern winds coming in from the east there. Low pressure areas tracking further south. But by this point, there is a lot of uncertainty. And when I show you the other deterministic computer models a little bit later, you'll see there are significant differences about just how things develop. Here's the upper air temperature sequence associated with this particular model run, though, the GFS. At the outset here, we see the green shading over the UK, so rather mild conditions, and in the short term, it turns a good deal milder, the yellows and oranges there, but through the rest of the period, blue shading indicating rather cold or cold air aloft. Remember, this is at about 1500 meters above sea level. So what sort of conditions can we expect down at the surface? Here are a few graphics to illustrate that. This is showing the picture on Wednesday the 20th, 15 GMT. Temperatures there in the south, 17 Celsius. Very, very mild indeed. In fact, some of the model runs are going for values a little bit higher than that. Even in the north there, so Northern Ireland double figures, Northern England as well, quite mild, a bit colder than in Scotland, but certainly a generally mild picture at this point. Moving forwards to Friday though, and temperatures have really dropped sharply, particularly across the south there, where we had 17 in the London area, it's now down to nine Celsius. And into the weekend, widespread showers have been forecast here. Snow over the Scottish hills. I think this may be a little bit conservative for once. It is based on GFS data, and I wouldn't be at all surprised to see more sleet or snow showers falling over the high ground in Northern England. This shows rain, but I think it could be underdoing the snow risk a little bit. And it's a cold picture, maximums around nine Celsius in the south, sevens in the north, and of course over the Scottish Highlands there, much colder. Also with these heavy showers around, there could well be some hail and thunder mixed in. So quite an unsettled picture into the weekend. But also one thing to bear in mind is the nights will be getting colder too. So the frost risk increases, much will of course depend on clear periods forming, winds becoming lighter. But this is just to illustrate forecast minimums on Monday morning, minus five there in the Scottish glens, but even in parts of the south, just above freezing. So quite a widespread frost potential towards the end of the first week. The Mogreps G charts here are quite interesting. This one shows uh, upper air temperatures and I'm, I thought I'd bring it up because this is really quite a dramatic plunge. We see through the first few days, the upper air temperatures are actually increasing. It's a very mild pulse of air there, about 10 Celsius at 1500 meters above our heads approximately. But then the next day it plunges there down to around minus five. So we're seeing a drop of about 15 Celsius in a very short period. A, a big contrast between the air masses. Later on, most of the runs are keeping the colder air in place, even across the south. At the ground level, though, the change in temperatures is not really as dramatic. It's still quite a big dip, but not as marked as at the upper air level. Through the first couple of days, so this is showing forecast maximums for London, very, very mild as I've been saying. One of the runs there, the Mogreps G Ensemble, going up to about 20 Celsius, but most there are between about 12 and 17 Celsius. So the 20 Celsius there is an outlier, but not completely out of the question, I guess. But here's a big dip. 
what we see is by the 22nd maximums are close to 10 celsius and then they actually go down further they peak in at around eight or nine celsius before gradually recovering later on so good support for colder conditions significantly colder conditions to develop through the second half of the first week but as i say the details become uncertain beyond that rainfall these are the forecast totals in millimeters from the ecm and gfs models for the first five days all parts of the uk seeing some rain generally wettest in the west and the northwest but moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day period and the distribution becomes more uncertain values have really increased everywhere but it could be that the wettest conditions will become focused on the southern half of the uk that would be due to high pressure building to the north forcing a low pressure areas to track further south so definitely something to keep an eye on now, in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare with each other as we head towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS on Tuesday the 26th, high pressure centre to the north, cold air moving down from the northeast, low pressure to the south. The Canadian model, though, is a little bit different at this point. There's a ridge of high pressure to the west, but there's an area of low pressure moving across the country, so showers or long spells of rain, perhaps some snow there over high ground in the north. The German icon is close to the GFS, high pressure to the north, the cold air moving down from the northeast. But the ECM model, that's different again. It has a low pressure moving in from the west and upper air temperatures are higher than on the GFS, for example. Finally, the UK Met Office Global it also has low pressure tracking eastwards there with the cold air to the north. So a lot of uncertainty really, I think, about just how things will be developing towards the end of this first week. In general terms, it's quite an unsettled pattern, a risk of showers or long spells of rain, particularly in the southern half of the United Kingdom, rather chilly as well, particularly in the northern half of the UK, and that's where there is a chance of a wintry condition, so snow over high ground. Well, with that uncertainty towards the end of the first week, how do things look like developing as we go through the second? Of course, just the general trends and the probabilities. And starting with a 16-day GEFS pot for London, Upper, upper air temperatures across the top here. Well, to start off with, most of the runs are below the thick black line, the 30 year average. There is a general upwards trend though, the purple line, the ensemble mean, climbs above the 30 year average towards the very end of the month. So maybe a little bit warmer by the time we get to the Easter period. Rain, well, quite a few spikes there showing up along the bottom and they continue to appear really right until the end of a plot so an ongoing risk of showers or longer spells of rain it's looking quite changeable or unsettled unfortunately so that's not great news for the Easter period perhaps temperatures trending upwards but still that risk of uh, wet conditions at times the two meter temperature data table for London maximums across the top light greens make up the majority to begin with those are runs going for between six and ten celsius but the amount of yellow starts to grow and that becomes the majority at least for a time there's also a little bit of the orange there so the yellows runs going for between 11 and 15. a trend upwards a warming trend just worthwhile though i think emphasizing as well that at this time of year when the showers come along temperatures will dip quite sharply so even though forecast maximums there between six and ten according to most runs if you catch a shower it will feel distinctly cold nighttime lows well between one and five celsius on many of the runs through the first few days so a chance of ground frost at least and i think in frost pockets across the southern half uk temperatures will be several degrees lower than this on some nights but of course as I've been saying, a lot will depend on cloud cover and winds easing because it could be quite blustery at times. Up to Manchester, it's a very similar really to the London plot. Just worth, I think, also mentioning that on the top half there, the spread is quite tight to begin with, so reasonably good agreement really about the general 
pattern, the general trend, but later on the runs start to diverge markedly and we've got some very warm ones going up to about 10 Celsius and some distinctly cold ones towards the end of each second week there. So quite a big spread, but the general theme is that temperatures will probably at least be recovering. Rainfall across the bottom, similar to the London picture. For our higher snow row values, maximum there of six out of 33. So a chance that there could be a little bit of wintriness even down to low levels in this part of the UK. The two meter temperature, Data tables for Manchester following a similar pattern to the London ones, although the recovery in temperatures less marked and taking a bit longer than it did in the south. Up to Glasgow, and there are some differences here because really for most of the second week, the majority of runs are remaining below that thick black line, so it's a below average picture, although once more there is a big spread there towards the end. The rainfall spikes across the bottom continue to appear and also the snow row values there are higher, 10 or 11, so a 30-33% chance of snow falling on a given day. Quite high, so I think there could well be some wintriness in the northern half of the UK, even down to low levels. But of course that doesn't necessarily mean that any snow which falls will be accumulating. I think uh, settling snow is most likely over high ground. Any accumulations at lower levels, very short lasting. The two metre temperature data tables for Glasgow, lots of blue on the nighttime lows for bottom half here. So a widespread frost risk. And that really, if it reduces later on, it's still there. There's still quite a lot of blue towards the end, 20, 25% of the runs. Also, lots of dark green, so it's staying distinctly chilly according to this data. Rainfall through week two. These charts are generated from the ECM Ensemble and they show the percentage risk of five millimetres or more rain falling on each of the first three days through the second week. Quite a wet picture according to these really, and you can see the orange shading is pushing a long way south. It's not just the northern half of the UK where it often is and the west. There's some orange there down into the southwest into central parts of southern England. On, so, so I think it's just reinforcing that message that there could well be higher pressure to the north, low pressure areas tracking further south. The following three days really reinforce that message. Some of the highest rain totals probably across the southern half of the country. The GEFS 10-day mean surface level pressure plot, this is for Good Friday, the, so Friday the 29th. Low pressure centred to the west, high pressure there probably to the north. It's, it's an unsettled pattern. Remember this is generated by averaging out all of the individual runs, so there will be a good deal of different solutions which have been forecast by them. But unsettled really sums things up the coldest conditions likely to be in the north. The uh, GEFS mean surface level pressure data table for York, so going forward through the second week, unsettled would really be the message here because most of the runs are going for below average pressure. Lots of green there, 996 to 1,010 millibars. There is some yellow and that's trending upwards towards the very end. So maybe holding out the hope for an improvement towards more settled conditions by the end of the month and into the early part of April. But the theme here is a very mixed one. Showers or long spells of rain in all parts of the UK as it remains unsettled. So to summarize that, week one, changeable showers or longer outbreaks of rain in all parts of the UK. It begins very mild, but it turns a good deal colder as a northwesterly flow develops. Therefore, there is an increasing risk of frost towards the end of the first week and snow is possible in the north, especially over high ground. Week two, rather cold early on, but temperatures probably recover, albeit gradually, and in the north it could well stay distinctly chilly. So that warm-up really more focused 
on the uh, southern and central regions. Showers or long spells of rain continue and there is still that chance of snow in the north. Also, the ongoing risk of frost, although that probably will be diminishing at least in the southern half of the UK later on. So, there we have it. It's the spring equinox, but winter seems determined to put in a late appearance. Where was it for most of December, January and February? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, if you did, then please hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Remember, of course, to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.